Welcome back to SMU College Game Day. This is your post-game show for the women's basketball game. And Josh, this wasn't much of a game, was it? From not, beginning to end. Not much. You know, this uh, SNU Crimson Storm team came in here with this huge intensity, the big atmosphere with homecoming game. We have yes. the alumni, we have current students, we have the the uh, student cheering section, you know, exactly. everything. Exactly. It's just huge intensity right now. Exactly. Big game. Uh, we knew this was a big game coming in. We knew that Southwestern Christian what what the worst uh, you know, or the best competition that could have come in, coming in one and two. But we knew that SNU had a strong team that no matter what team came into Sawyer Center, they could pull off the win. Uh, big difference between the first half and second half. Thought for a little bit that Southwestern Christian, you know, was, was going to uh, come out and give them a pretty good game. And uh, just a little bit about the first and half differences. Well, you see, Southwestern Christian came into this game definitely seeking out this win. But at the end of the half, the score was 49 to 30. And uh, second half wasn't too pretty for them, as they, as uh, SNU Crimson Storm defense just didn't really allow that much offense to to be played. Exactly, reached the century mark. Oh, definitely. That's hard to do. That's hard to do. But they did it. They go out, uh, continue to not let Southwestern Christian get penetration in the paint. Continue to shoot well around the perimeter. Even had some subs in towards the end of the game. Oh, absolutely. Scored pretty well. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And this is definitely not only a win on the schedule for the Crimson Storm, but a moral victory as well. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Now this is just the just the season opener. You know, this is just their second game of the season. However, they're off to a great start, being two and zero. Yeah. For those that didn't really catch the score, the final score was one hundred to forty nine. A huge, huge victory for the Lady Storm. Exactly. Proving that the Eagles. Can't fly through the storm. You know oh, so, absolutely not. Good game by the Crimson Storm. You know they uh, were really hitting on all cylinders. It was really perfect execution mm -hmm. all the way around. It shows promise for the future when you get subs in like that mm -hmm. and you're still are able to keep a big, a big lead like that and absolutely. finish through the game. That's a good thing and that's promise for the future. And once they get those subs in, working on all cylinders along with the starters, you know yes. that definitely shows that there is team chemistry along with this this Crimson Storm. Exactly. Uh, Josh, let's talk a little bit about the inside presence by Abby Mara tonight. She did not, or Abby Mara, I'm sorry, did not disappoint. Abby Mara did not disappoint. She was a strong center, strong power forward in this in this uh, Crimson Storm offense. Yes. Well, good good game for the women's. Now let's move on to the big game of the night. We got the men's basketball game coming up. Southern Nazarene University, Southwestern Christian Eagles. Southern Nazarene University men's ranked 18th preseason. Yes. You know, they, last year they were ranked 10th. They ended the season without the, with the conference championship, without a national championship. What do you think? What do you expect out of this game? I think this game is definitely going to be the spotlight of this homecoming weekend. Uh, the Crimson Storm, they're coming in with high expectations to, uh, to come on. Let's just have a little flashback to the right. previous, uh, previous matchups against the Southwestern Christian offense. Currently, SNU is leading the series four to zero. Four to zero. I don't think Southwestern has a chance coming into this into this home arena. Certainly not after watching that women's game. Absolutely not. Uh, Absolutely this not. This year, the Southern Nazarene University Crimson Storm men's basketball team is 0-1, but they did play the 11th best team in NCAA Division II. What can we expect? Or I'm sorry, what X factors can we expect to show up in this game? Oh, that that first loss was a huge heartbreak against against Central Oklahoma University. A, a overtime loss. It was a big heartbreak. But I think they'll bounce back tonight. They'll have a strong offense. Uh, definitely think the uh, key players is going to be John West. I, I I predict them to go big tonight. Okay. Definitely big. Yeah, definitely big. If you had to guess, how many points is John West dropping tonight? I'm going to say he leads scores with 25 points. That's 25 what I'm predicting. Points. We will see. 25 points. Well, he That's had what 18 I say. last game against a pretty good, pretty solid UCO team, Broncos. Mm -hmm. But with this intensity, with this atmosphere happening, I think he will definitely step up his game, definitely force it in the paint, get those shots, and I, I definitely think he's going to have a big game tonight. Now, let's talk about kind of not really a dark horse, a very talented player, but maybe somebody that doesn't give as much, uh, doesn't get as much rep as he deserves. Adrian Hunter, a senior guard on the team, 
Last game, lightning up beyond the uh, beyond the uh, what, what do you expect? Literally. What, yeah. What should we expect from him this game? Was that just a kind of thing that happened, or can we expect more, you know, Trace from this guy. I definitely think that we're going to expect a bigger game. You know, last game he did have his career high with five three-pointers. Five three-pointers shooting around the perimeter. I think he's going to definitely, I think the SNU Crimson Storm offense is definitely going to dish out the ball to the perimeter and have him just set up definitely. and drain those threes. Definitely. definitely going to be a big night for him. Definitely. And uh, before we get to the picks, we'll get to the picks later because we want to save that for last because that's the good stuff. Yes. But uh, looking over the conference, uh, what teams do you think Southern Nazarene is going to have to kind of watch their backs, kind of make sure that this team doesn't sneak up on them? Because I know we got some ranked teams in the conference. Mm -hmm. we got some top ten teams. Tell me a little oh. bit maybe about the teams you're thinking are uh, dark horse contender in the SAC. Yeah, I think SNU is going to have a huge, huge, uh, a big rivalry coming uh, with Oklahoma Baptist. You're going to have to mark your schedules with this game. January 14th, they come here. January 14th, that's going to be a packed house for that game. So mark your calendars for that one. Yes. And then they do a home and away series, too. They go there. Yes. That's a tough game. Last year, OBU pulled that one out. They got a big stud down low. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to see how that, how that shakes out. Along with Oklahoma Baptist, you know, Oklahoma Baptist is actually ranked number seven in the NAIA poll. They're ranked number seven as SNU is ranked number 18. So I think this is going to be a big rivalry as SNU tries to prove themselves in these standings. And it, yeah, it seems to just every year become a bigger and bigger rivalry as both teams increase or both teams improve over the years. And that's, you know, that's probably what's going to happen. Absolutely. So along with Oklahoma Baptist, Clay, what, what would you suggest is another big rivalry that we need to look out for? Well, every year. Josh, you got to watch out for solid teams like Oklahoma City University. Mm -hmm. The Stars are solid, uh, especially when playing at home. Oklahoma Christian is another team that we have to watch out for. Mm -hmm. Good programs there. Pretty much our, our biggest competition are our state in-state rivals. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, you do uh, have to watch out for programs later in the year, like uh, you know Pikeville number one. That's a big surprise in the NAIA this year. It's Pikeville from Kentucky. Last year, ranked 24th. This year, number one, three season. I think that proves that if Pikeville can shoot from the number 24 seed up to the number one in the national poll, I think SNU has a big shot at boosting their, boosting their standings right there with tonight's win. Agreed. I definitely think. Definitely agree. Now, let's, uh, let's kind of do a little pretender contender thing. Okay. Uh, let's go over some conference teams, maybe decide uh, where some teams stand. Now, we have only played you know, two, three, four games each. But uh, where do certain schools fall in pretender contender for you? Okay. What are some real teams? What are some teams that maybe don't have it for the last rest of the year? Well, definitely, like we mentioned earlier, that Oklahoma Baptist is going to be a big, big rivalry coming into Bethany, Oklahoma here, as well as Oklahoma Christian and Oklahoma City. Now, however, those three teams are going to be the big powerhouses that are going to come in here and try to take some wins from this Crimson Storm offense and defense. However, you know, you'll have Kansas Wesleyan and Dallas Christian coming in. I don't think they're going to have a big contender. I don't think they're going to put up the fight that they need to put up to take this from SNU. Yeah. And John Brown, for me, is another one of the schools. They're good. They're 4-0 right now. Mm -hmm. But they came here last year, and, you know, it was a good game, and we ended up actually losing that game. But I think that's the team that SNU can come out on top against. And I think we can expect to see Southern Nazarene University in the top ten, in my opinion, at the end of the year. I definitely think so. You know, coming off that tough loss the first game, I don't think that's going to set the tone for this SNU uh, basketball team. I think they'll turn around this season right now. With this game, they'll have a big win going into this next game at, at, uh, at Ozark Christian.